Hello there, Zed Slayers! Kaboost.exe here with another seasonal video for Killing Floor 2. This time we're talking about the fall 2019 event in Killing Floor 2 entitled Grim Treatments. Once again, we have a new weapon skin this year. This time around, it's for the Chris SMG. Not my favorite SMG, but I'm not complaining. I really like the look of these Halloween skins. I'm kind of a big Halloween guy. It's honestly one of my favorite times of year. Now to get this weapon skin, you'll have to complete the seasonal objectives. The first four will require you to play on the new level, the Ashwood Asylum. My tips for this level is to just watch your corners. I often found myself accidentally getting stuck on walls. I did also find myself getting kind of lost. This level seems a bit more complex. I don't know why, but my brain has a hard time wrapping itself around this level. I often find it difficult to remember the layout, and it also seems a little bigger, too. Because of this, I feel like you really do need to start heading to the trailer before the wave ends. And obviously, make sure to stick together. It's better for your odds of survival. There are a few areas that I recommend not going, for instance, the cafeteria, I always have a hard time surviving in there, amongst a few other places, but it matters on how your group's dynamic is. So let's talk about the objectives, and I'll give you some tips along the way. After the objectives, I'll give some of my inputs on the new things that are added, mainly the weapons, especially the two DLC weapons. I'll do more in-depth stuff with those as time goes on, so make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when those come out. And please tell me in the comments what you think about them. Starting at the top of our seasonal list, we have Ashwood Assault. This is the standard beat a boss on the survival game mode with a difficulty set to hard or higher on the new level. It might be a good time to mention that the standard ground objectives behave differently. Instead of the objective requiring players to stand inside it and outnumber the Zeds in the zone, players will now be rewarded based off how many Zeds they kill while they're standing inside the zone. The Zed doesn't have to be in the zone, but the player does, and there's a limit to how much DOS you can actually get. So make sure you're standing inside the zone while defending. Let me know what you think of this change. I think it's a nice change, I think it makes it more of a bonus, and I don't have to worry about my teammates not caring about the objective. While they're off doing whatever it is that they're doing, I can go stand inside the zone and get us a few extra DOS. The second objective is Long Term Treatment, which is to get to wave 15 on Endless on Ashwood Asylum. It's pretty standard, honestly. The third challenge is to complete weekly checkup, which is to complete any weekly challenge on the Ashwood Asylum. I hope you get one that you like. The event goes until November 5th, so if you don't find something you like this week, you can try again next week. I would just say watch out for Up Up and Decay. I'm, I'm not a fan of that one myself. The fourth objective is cleaning the wards. Kill 1500 Zeds on Ashwood Asylum. And I really can't give you a tip on this one. All I would say is just do all the objectives and come back to this one last. And lastly, we have Bombs Away. This update lets the map nuked be selective for objective mode, so you need to complete it on hard or above and you're good to go. You have yourself a nice new skin to add to your collection. Now that we've got the seasonal objectives out of the way, let's talk about the five new weapons. Two of them you have to pay for or play with somebody who's already bought them. If you catch me on the PC version, I got them, so you don't have to worry. Now let me know what you think of these weapons in the comments. I want to know what you think about all of them and which one of them you would like to see a review of first. At the top of the list here, we have the HRG nail gun for SWAT. It's an alternate form of the Vlad 1000 nail gun. It has the same settings where it fires one nail or three nails, but now it's automatic, regardless of which setting you have it on. It really makes me wonder why this isn't just the default nail gun. All they really did was take the nail gun and just make it automatic. I don't know what I was thinking they would have done differently. I don't know if it's damage is different or anything else. If you do know, please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to need to know that stuff eventually. But I think it's a little underwhelming, which isn't a problem. Just having a bigger arsenal is nice to kind of mix it up and kind of challenge yourself to see what you can do with your loadout. It's kind of just an AA-12 version of the Vlad 1000. And speaking of shotguns, the next weapon we have is the HRC Buckshots for the support. What I love about this weapon is the price. Basically, right after round one, you can just buy one of these to go, and you're just, you know, it's, it's better than the pump, in my opinion. I mean, it's got a faster reload and firing rate, so just having one of them is basically superior to having the pump. My only real complaint is that it's not for Gunslinger. I love Gunslinger, and I thought it would be. I don't know why it's not. Maybe it diminishes the value of having it for support if it was Gunslinger. I don't know. But I would like the option to have that plus the new paid weapon, which we'll get to in a second here. Now, our last HRG weapon is the Health Thrower for Field Medic. I, I really think this is a good addition. 
I really do. Because when you're a field medic and everyone's bundled together and just grouped together, it can be hard to heal the right teammate. You'll just kind of fire your darts into the crowd or throw a grenade, which can then get canceled out by a siren. So being able to just be in the group and just spray and pray really makes it easier to be medic. It is, I don't think it's ever been easier to be medic. And if you don't hit a teammate, or if the cloud just lingers and hits his head, you're gonna do some damage. I mean, not maybe not much, not much at all, but you'll do something, right? And it still has the dart in case someone's too far. It's a perfect all around weapon for the medic. I really like it. And I've been seeing a lot of medics use it. I think every game I played with a medic has had them using the health thrower. And I don't think it's because it's just new. I think it's because it's actually a really good weapon. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the two paid DLC weapons. Are they good? Are they worth the money? Well, I don't think it's worth buying one gun for $10 unless you want to be that friend or that guy. Or you just really like the skins that they come with because that's the only way to get those skins. I think the Rhino is my new favorite weapon for Gunslinger. I'm, I'm not even joking. I really like the fragmentation. Basically what happens is you fire one shot and when it hits something, it splits off into three different shots. It's really cool to see in slow-mo. And on top of that, it's really effective. Even when you miss or just hit a Zed in the chest, it kills them. It's really powerful and it's not that expensive. It's the same price as the Buckshot for crying out loud. I'm fairly certain they're gonna nerf it or do something to it to make it more balanced. But for now, it seems really good. And I really like them. I'm really happy I bought it. And I'm not just saying that. I actually do think these are really good. I would say try them out first. Join a game if the person's got them or if you have it on Steam, add me. I'll let you come in, try the weapon out and then you make your decision. I would like to know what you guys think so when I make the video about it, I can then you know, put some of your comments in there. I personally love this weapon. I think it's really good. I would like to see the fragmentation put on other weapons in the future as well. Could you imagine an automatic with that? How much, how cool would that be? That'd be like a tier five commando. Tier five commando. Fragmentation rounds. Ah, love it. Love it. And lastly, we have the ion thruster for Berserker. So this sword absorbs the kinetic energy from the friction that you have when you attack a Zed. That's the, the, the lore, at the least. Basically what happens is you just keep attacking Zeds, you'll build up a meter. Once the meter is maxed out, you can then do this massive attack that really knocks down big enemies. I've been using it on Scrakes. That is when I remember that I have it charged up and I don't hit the reload button. So you unleash it by hitting reload. Hitting the reload button when this weapon is fully charged up will cause you to use your super move. I'm so used to just casually hitting the reload button because your character plays with his gun or twirls his melee weapon that I just end up wasting this super move. This isn't a problem with the game itself. This is just an issue that I'm doing. Something that I need to work on fixing. Maybe if the move was to hit both a light and heavy attack at the same time, maybe that would have been a better way to do it. I, I don't know. It's just something that I need to learn to work through, I guess. Because 60% to 70% of the time, I end up wasting the move because I I don't realize I have it fully charged or I don't, or I just forget and I hit the R button and I end up wasting it in a traitor wave or when there's no enemies nearby. It's gonna take some time adjusting, but I think once I get it, it's gonna be amazing. It is expensive also. It's 2000 dosh to buy, but it's worth saving up for it. Oh, it's worth it. Like between this, the battle ax and the mason shield, it's, it's comparable. You can compare the three weapons and it really does add a nice little unique gameplay to it, you know? One thing to remember with the weapon is that light attacks seem to gain 1% and heavy seem to gain 3%. Do with that information as you will. I'm not sure which one would get you the 100 faster. It's a cool weapon and I do really enjoy using it. And that's gonna be it for now, all right? Please let me know what you think of these weapons, what you think of the new skin, the new level. What do, what do you think of this update? As well as what weapon would you like to see me review first? I wanna get one of them out, hopefully by the end of October, if not at the beginning of November. So make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that way you're notified when that video is released. And to help sweeten the deal, it's important to note, I have a lot of video ideas right now. 
I'm trying to get a nice balance of my content going right now. I have ideas for Killing Floor, some for Fallout 76 still, if you guys want to see some more of those. I want to get more of my funny moments out there, maybe have them on a weekly thing. And I have this personal project where I analyze certain aspects of certain games. The first one of those videos is out right now. It's my Doom 64 video. It is the forgotten sequel. Not so much forgotten now since it's getting its re-release for the Nintendo Switch. The first re-release it's getting since it was originally released on the N64. And I delve into various aspects of the game and why I think we haven't heard much about this game since it was originally released. It's not a game that's often discussed, and I want to know what you guys think about that video. I have more videos similar to that one coming out that are going to tackle various topics. I'm really proud of it. It's the first kind of video that I made that's like that, and I really want to make more of those as time goes on. So please check that one out. I'm really happy with it. If you like this video and you want to see some more Killing Floor 2 content, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell and leave a comment there say, I want more of this. I want more of this game. Stop with the other stuff. This is what I want. But you don't, you don't have to, of course, you don't have to say it that way. If you want to, you can. I mean, I'm not going to stop you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm recording this audio really early. <laughs> I've kind of overworked myself here when it comes to all these video ideas, and yeah, you don't need to hear about it. I got some good stuff coming up here real soon. I'm really happy about it. I got a, I got a movie review coming up, actually. All right, I'll give you a hint. It stars The Rock. He's one of the main characters. All right, well, and that's going to be it. So I hope to see you guys real soon. I hope you liked the video, and remember, I love you.